hi team good evening in this azure database master program so in today's session we will be uh, looking at the hands on lab on implementing the delta live table pipeline with the employee and department data sets so why i am going with employee and department data sets because these are something which you are very well aware so before i just directly go and do the hands on let's quickly discuss some of the rules that we need to follow in in order to implement this particular uh this particular hands on lab okay so we will learn first thing is rules which needs to follow for dlt pipeline implementation and then we'll do the quickly lab so if you look at the rules right the first rule is delta live table supports only python and sql language for now so as of now you can use only python notebook sorry sql uh, notebook in order to implement the delta live table implementation live table pipelines okay second thing is that these dlt notebooks can't be run interactively meaning normally uh, so when you write a python code or sql code you will run one by one cell one by one cell one by one cell right you can see the uh, result of each command you cannot able to run like that it should be run at once through the delta live table workflows so the third point is dlt notebooks won't support magic commands magic commands i hope everybody aware whoever knows data wix right we use for uh, like let's say in the python notebook if you want to execute any sql code if you want to execute any scala code we can use the magic command similarly if you want to call some other notebook from the current notebook we can use percentile run magic command to call the other notebooks right so but those things will not work here next each notebook should contain only one language you cannot implement the second language in the same notebook next in order to implement the delta live tables we required a premium databricks workspace for dlt pipeline implementation when you are creating your databricks workspace from the azure portal make sure you are choosing the premium uh, premium databricks workspace okay the next thing is when you implement all the code and all once you have written so automatically the delta live table pipeline creates the cluster which is high configuration which is high configurations so that's why if you are using any let's say if you are using any free trial and all uh, free trial subscription it won't work minimum you should have a pay as you go subscription is required and you that also within the pay as you go it will not allow you to do the delta live table uh, pipeline implementation for that choose one of the region in which region you are creating your databricks workspace and then you need to upgrade your region, regional quota to work with the delta live tables meaning for east to west we have uh, by default i think uh, it will allow some 12 cores or 8 cores by default but you need to increase at least to the 20 cores similarly there is a limitation on the memory so you need to see at least you need to maintain 20 cores okay 20 cores in the one of the region whatever you feel uh, that you want to work right so now with this particular rules we can start forward we can go and implement for implementation we are going to follow the lake house architecture so same uh, lake house architecture we follow but instead of doing in the earlier procedural etl we do a declarative etl as we discussed a declarative is etl it's nothing but a gps whereas procedural etl is nothing but a uh, our azure data factory apache airflow it is uh, just a step by step na navigation that you are guiding is the examples that we are given so what is the advantage of the gps if we go with the declarative etl that is the delta live table pipeline implementation the advantages that we have discussed is the first thing is it will tell you the how much time it will take and it will let, uh, like uh, there is a checkpoints so from where it is started uh, like how much time it will take not only that what and all it is crossing where and all blockers will be there everything it can able to guess it okay so let's not waste any more time let's quickly jump into the portal okay so in order to create the databricks workspace right so first we need to log into the portal let's log in into the cloud pundit at the red gmail so within this so what you need to do is basically we need to click on the uh, data bricks okay azure data bricks click on azure data bricks okay once you click on azure data bricks click create azure data bricks 
So choose the resource group. Let's say the resource group name I am giving cloud pandit iPhone dev iPhone RG. Click OK. Then just give the workspace name is cloud pandit ADB workspace. Okay. And in which region I am taking because these two ways I am taking the region is I have extended the limitations that I have with my memory or cores, etc. in the East US. So everything will work if you choose a East US. That's why I'm choosing this. Pricing tier, if you choose, as we discussed, we must have to go with the pre uh, premium. That is one of the rules that we have discussed. So once we have given these things, just click review plus create. Okay, you can see create an Azure Databricks workspace, right? Just wait, click create. So it is basically going to create the Azure Databricks workspace. Let's wait for some three, four minutes until this is available. Okay. Let's wait. So if you look at this particular Databricks workspace in the premium uh, pricing tier, it is launched now. Let's go to this resource. Okay. So then we need to come down, click launch workspace. Okay, so I'll be just logging into this. So along with the Databricks workspace, I also required a one more uh, service called uh, Azure Blob Storage. I'll take a something called Azure Blob Storage. So I'll tell you why Azure Blob Storage because to maintain all my data, so all the metadata, complete data, I wanted to store it in the uh, my Blob Storage. That's why let me create my own storage account come here so you can just choose the same resource group here you can choose the storage acronym cloud fund with the blob 2908 then click review plus create okay so once that is done just click create so now if you look at here so the storage account also it is going to create very quickly so don't worry about it so now what we need to do okay so very simple first we need to click new uh, so go to compute. So we need to create a cluster. Okay, so there will be some kind of a errors. We, we will get it. The reason is due to the compute compute issue. Okay, click create compute. So here cloud fund is cluster and you I want to choose the single node. Okay, I want to choose the single node, which is a four cores and 14 GB memory then click create compute i think we won't get it so it is just using the four cores right then i have total 20 cores 16 plus 4 20 cores i am going to use so yeah so we won't get any error don't worry so this is a cluster i created now i need a notebook so first i need a notebook notebook is the place where we write the code i think the basics of the data because everybody were in this session now what we can do is i'll be just uh, like click on this and what you can do is if you want to create a new notebook, you can able to create the new notebook here. But let's say if you want to uh, what you want to do is if you want to add or if you want to import some notebooks, you can just go inside the users. OK, so inside cloud pundit at the red channel dot com. Now what you can do, you can just click on this. You see an option called import. Just click import. So browse. I have just downloaded some of the notebooks that I have just okay so I'm just taking these two okay open this once I have just uh, downloaded these two okay imported so these two notebooks I just imported these two notebooks I just imported okay I'm just clicking on this So if you look at this, right? So if you look at these two notebooks, first let's go to the task one notebook. Okay. In the task one notebook, what we are going to do is mount blob storage. So mount blob storage is something I hope everybody aware, whoever is uh, took the training from me, right? So I hope everybody aware. So for mount point, what all things you need is first you need to go to the storage account. This is a storage account. You can go to the containers. Inside the containers, you can create a container called global. Okay, this is one thing that you need to do primarily. 
once you have done the global container once you have created now what you can do is you can come down take the access keys okay so take the access key put this particular access key here okay from here to here you need to put the access key once you are done that you come back to the storage account so you are just taking this storage name and you are putting that storage name here and the same storage name you need to put it here also there is a space is coming up so you need to carefully observe so this is the same right global is the container same container i created if you observed here in the storage account i just created the uh, global container okay global container i created so what we have done as of now so as of now we have done only three steps step one is databricks workspace in the premium uh, pricing tier we have launched uh, we have deployed second thing is blob storage we created now the third thing that we are doing is from the databricks we are connecting to the from the databricks we are connecting to the uh, blob storage so basically actual lab if we consider in real time we store these keys and all in the key vault from the key vault we will reference but uh, uh, so for the con uh, time constraints and all i am just directly taking this okay so once we have done this now what you can do is you can just uh, attach this notebook to the cluster so this is the cluster which we created so this is the code and this is my cluster okay before i go and create this connection let me check is there any connection with the same name available so there won't be any connection because this is the new databricks workspace okay so there are some mount points which are default mount points but custom mount point which we created will not be there because this is completely new okay so there is no a mount point which is available currently with the mnt slash global right but after i execute this i can able to i can able to see a mnt slash global mount point in this notebook okay just wait there okay now you see the mount point is created if you execute above you will be able to see mnt slash global okay that is good so now i am just removing the rest of all the cells that i have because these cells no longer required for me okay so i will be just removed everything so just created the mount point okay now what you can do step four you can say in the blob storage we have established the connection to the maybe let me note down the steps that we have done so the step one is basically if you see step one we have created databricks workspace in premium so step two is blob storage is created blob storage is created step three is mount mounted blob storage in databricks so step four is basically okay upload required data sets in the blob storage because we established a connection from our uh, like a databricks to the blob right so now our goal is to have some data in the blob storage let's upload some data in the blob okay i am coming here so i'll just click upload okay browse for files now if you go to here employee okay employee.csv file i am uploading instead of uploading directly i'll just say here uh, this is emp data employee data okay then click upload so once we have uploaded that employee data under employee folder similar to this let's upload department data also in the same folder okay so department data in the department data dept data folder let's upload this okay in dept data folder you will see department data department.csv approximately we have 27 records i guess right so we have approximately 27 28 means first row is a headers so similarly if you go back you see the employee data so it is having employees.csv so if you look at here right so we have around 50 rows so 51 because first row is a header okay 50 records in the employee department we have 27 records you remember that because you will see everything in the our dlt pipeline complete details now you can come here okay so i'll be just 
opening the one more notebook that we have uploaded right so this is the one more notebook maybe you can go to workspace so you can just click on if you navigate through workspace users cloud at the gmail.com you can see my notebook okay you can go to the notebook which i created so this dlt we need to install for some other reasons i'll tell you okay so these are the three things that i'll be using so that's why i just uh, imported these are called a modules okay next uh, you need to say that so basically this is called a python function okay so this is how we create the our data frame in spark that data frame i am returning through this particular function so you know whatever function name you are defining with that there is a table will be created what is that table dlt table how the emp with this python function how delta live table will be created so this is called a decorators in the python so decorators basically accept this particular function as a parameters and it creates a delta live table with the same name as a function name okay so what all things i am saying here this is the path this particular folder is having a csv file which is having the headers and i am also saying that so there are whatever data quality checks is required for the bronze layer we discuss lake house architecture in that we have bronze silver gold right whatever uh, required data quality checks is required for the bronze layer just to do that and you optimize the pipeline so these two properties i am using to optimize my pipeline overall pipeline this is a some comment saying that employee data maybe you can say reading or creating okay creating emp table with employee data something like that some comment you can put it okay so this is basically creates the employee table similar to that i am also creating the department table without uh, changing anything just a path i have changed everything else is same okay so same you just have to use this particular dlt dot create underscore table which is a our decorator in the python so now if you look at here right so we created two things we created the employee table we created the department table now what you need to do i want to know what is the department name in which particular employee is working so what you can do you need to join these two tables so in order to join these two tables what you need to do you need to find the join key what is the join key here so join key is if you look at right the join key is going to be the department id so if you look at here i created the two tables emp and dept okay so this emp dept is a function name and under that particular function if you see emp is the dlt table and i am renaming as a, a. similarly i am also creating a table called uh, delta delta live table called department table so i am not creating here i am just reading dlt dot read of emp means the table which i created here employee table i am reading and uh, joining with the dlt dot read department table both i am joining based on the department id and it is an inner join after that i am taking only all the columns from the employee table and only one column from the department table called department underscore name okay so these are the columns that i am taking clear all of you yes okay thank you now if you come up like if you come down right so what i am doing here again i am using a dlt dot uh, create underscore table and this is the emp department emp department is the third table that i am creating here after joining so whatever result is coming with that result see this if all the calculation is happening that result i am returning through this particular function so again this function i am passing to the python decorator so this creates what emp dept table so that that is the third table along with that there is a some kind of a constraints uh, so normally primary key foreign key unique key something like that constraints will be there in sql right similar to that i am putting some constraints saying that hey just validate the department id if the department id is not null then only you take it if department id is null means you drop those things you have three things ex expect expect means department underscore id is basically null means you can just uh, uh, like uh, 
continue with that but if you have expect or fail will be there fail means complete program you can fail it if we if you find department underscore id is uh, null but what we are using is we are using expect underscore or underscore drop drop means if we find the department underscore id is uh, null we are going to drop those columns but we are not stopping the program okay so that is what the constraints this is how we will define the constraints okay next if you come down so now we have the emp data so total three tables is created emp table department table by joining these two we created the emp department so i am using this emp department to calculate two more results so because there are some of the departments where we are having the highest number of people so that is what our our primary focus that's why what i am doing is so i am reading this result in the table emp department i am filtering out wherever we have a department underscore id equal 50 okay so department id wherever we have a 50 so from that particular department can you just group by department name and department id count of employees just to tell me in the department id total number of employees how many total count of the employees then total salary of the employees okay total emp count i can say here okay here i can say total uh, employees like total salaries okay total department salaries you can say this is the meaningful information okay total salaries that we are paying for this department total number of employees in this particular department okay so department underscore shipping the department is department 50 is a shipping okay i'm just calculating the uh, total number of employees and the total salary for the shipping department similarly i am also calculating for the department called purchasing okay department purchasing also i am just trying to find the uh, total number of employees and the total salary this is what my notebook so now what is the dependency if you look at the dependency is employee and departments are basically creates in the emp department table and emp department table is basically again used in the uh, like department uh, shipping department purchasing right so this is the basic uh, basic uh, lineage the dependency graph let's see when we have used the delta live table uh, delta live table pipeline will it be able to identify that dependency okay now how to create that okay so in order to create that go to workflows click create sorry don't go to workflows and so you can go and create it but we have a direct option that's why okay come to the delta live tables then click create a pipeline okay in this pipeline you can say that this is a uh, pl for training okay pl for training purpose i am just to draw like uh, designing this pipeline so production ed edition basically product edition is advanced all the components i want to be enabled for this particular pipeline so this pipeline should continuously run or it should run once and it has to stop yes i want to run once and it has to stop source code where we have our actual code our actual code is here right in the users cloud pundit we have the dlt python emp department this is the notebook come down here you can see hive meta store which is very very important now uh, so next workshop is basically on the unity catalog so which is also very important all the projects are migrating to the unity catalog nowadays right so hive meta store if you look at here what happens whatever delta live tables are creating whatever metadata information everything will be stored here that's why i want to use mnt slash global which is a my blog storage mount point under that i am creating a one folder called metadata under that i am creating one metadata under that metadata all the delta live table information will be stored so come down here you can say enterprise enterprise underscore organization okay so what it is what is this this is a schema let's say whenever you create a schema in the database dbo dot will come right so what is the dbo database object dbo dot customer dbo dot sales like you will put it right so dbo schema that's how for all our delta live tables this is the schema that i am giving by default let's say if you want to make it more meaningful so what you can do is people department the department like sorry the schema is uh, 
people okay target schema is just i am giving people so instead of that this is the meaningful information right enterprise organization so enterprise underscore organization is the best schema that i can able to provide next cluster policies you will not have anything here so enhanced auto scaling auto scaling means based on the requirement the compute will be keep on increasing when it is not required it will decrease but i don't want i want to go for the fixed size of the compute that is a one worker node i am taking okay one worker node one worker node means total here we will have a two worker nodes okay one is basically uh, one is basically driver node one more will be the worker node that is how the spark architecture will work right driver and worker will be there so by default one driver will be there i am choosing one worker node within that okay so if you want to get some notifications uh, whenever it is successful whenever it is failed you can just configure your mail id so okay let's say i want to just configure you can just configure but uh, if you don't want to configure you don't want to configure okay leave it so but it is very simple to configure that's why i am not explaining that particular option with this you can create your workflow okay this is a delta live table pipeline we just created so our pipeline is ready so now what you can do you just click start to start our execution so it is waiting for the resource as i mentioned what happens is first first time the cluster will wait cluster will new cluster will be creating for the delta live tables right so for this particular pipeline new uh, what i can say new cluster will be created where you can see that new cluster is if you go to compute if you go to job job compute you will be able to see a so dlt iphone execution this node uh, this cluster is creating in the back end so if you see the size of this particular compute the size of this particular node is see 16 gb memory 8 cores of the one worker node 16 gb 8 cores of the our driver node so driver and worker right so total minimum 16 cores and 32 gb is required to start our dlt cluster okay so now even you can go to the workflows from the workflows delta live tables you can able to see our job just click on our job our pipeline you can call it as so waiting for the resource once the cluster is created there so waiting for resource will finish it will come to the it will come to the initialization initialization where it will check all the syntaxes so everything it will check whether you have maybe sometimes you make a mistake saying that you have chosen the sql uh, notebook and you write a python code so such type of errors and all it will throw initial errors then uh, it will create the all the tables code execution everything done once that is done it will show you the rendering graph will show you the lineage the dependency between the tables okay let's wait for a minute or two so that you can see now the job is moved to the initializing right so waiting for resources to initializing it is moved so very quickly it will move from initializing to the setting up tables now you see it is executing our code setting up tables once setting up tables is completed we will see the rendering graph okay now you can see this graph will give you complete knowledge right so you can see it is not completed execution um, you can just see here uh, so the job is running uh, like within 14 seconds it will complete so this is uh, within some 18 seconds it is recalculating right so 14 seconds and 18 seconds it is running since 4 seconds now you see 7 seconds you can also see the number of records which it read from here right so the number of records which it read is uh, from department table is 27 records you can see that okay so then you can also see okay then you can also see from the department table we have 27 records from employee table we have 50 records so when we join these two we have total 50 records here and the department underscore purchasing we have only one because if you remember group by that particular department whatever department we have uh, filtered on that particular department we have done a group by to calculate the total uh, count of employees and total salary similarly for this particular department as well clear so this is how the dependency graph will come so now if you want to analyze for each one of these so in the department if you see you have mentioned branch right 
So you can see some of these things here and the branch, whatever data qualities checks is required, it has done. And it's mentioned that it has not dropped anything after doing the data validations. The columns that it is reading from the department table is this. Similarly for the employee table, so these are the columns it is reading and this is uh, done some kind of data validations. Uh, you can see this is the target table, okay? Uh, so you can see creating this is the comment that we have kept while uh, creating if you come here EMB department, so this is normal comment everything will be there here if you come to data quality you remember we have a constraint valid uh, The department underscore ID should not be a null right so it just verified it did not find any record That's why it's saying failed is zero percent. So after the expectation is so the department underscore ID should not be null So after that it is zero percent is so what is the result? So I we have taken all the records from the employee table and from the department table we have taken only department name. Okay. So all the columns from any table if you want to see you can able to see but what columns you selected after this you can see this and then only one row is coming here we are calculating the department name department ID total count and total salary. Clear team. So now you can see right department underscore name department underscore ID under uh, which department and we are just doing a group by this department ID department name or uh, total count and total salary. Okay. Similarly, if you come here, you can see the department name department ID total employee count and total department salary. Okay. So this is how the schema for each table also you can able to see team. Okay, so now if you want to go back and you want to change it in the future something right you can click on the settings You can just make the required changes whatever changes that you want to do you can able to do but one thing you need to remember Hive meta store you cannot able to change because this is the place where already metadata is stored If you change it, it cannot able to get the existing tables That's why it is not a load but rest of everything you can able to change these things. Okay, that is one thing next thing so if you want to schedule these things you can schedule it if you want to delete this pipeline you can delete it if you want to give some kind of uh, kind of a permission let's say you want to give uh, some permission to your uh, colleague you want to uh, read this particular thing or you want to run you want to just manage meaning he can also give the permission to others you can just give the required permissions to them okay so if at all any errors or something comes you will see errors if at all any warnings anything you can able to see these things so by default our dlt pipelines if it is failed first time by default it will pick for the rerun after 30 seconds after 30 seconds immediately there is a rerun which is going to happen in this particular dlt uh, pipelines okay now what we need to do is we need to start our we need to start the testing okay Let's start the testing for that. I'll be creating one notebook called test notebook. Okay, this is our testing notebook. So in this testing notebook, I'll do the test. So now what we can do is uh, what we can do is we can just uh, need to test whether all those tables are existed or not. Right. So what you can do is if you go to the data. If you click on the data in the Hive Meta Store, you will be able to see the schema that we have created. Okay, so just wait. So you can see ENT underscore org. So under ENT underscore org, you can see the department table EMP or the source tables. Then we joined these two. This is the third table. And from this table, we have uh, derived these two tables. All the five tables you can able to see. So now what you can do, you can just go here. Okay, go to the testing notebook and let's start testing the notebook. Okay, so for that, let me take a SQL notebook. I just changed the language of this notebook to the SQL. Here I'll say select a star from ENT underscore org dot EMP table. Execute this. So total how many records we should have in the employee table. So total 50 records you can also do the testing right. So you can see total 50 rows if you want to download you can just click on this it is saying okay. This is the employee table you take same query you put this and you can say your DEPT okay department table. Okay, so this is the department table which is having the total 27 rows. Now the third table is basically EMP department. Execute this. 
so it is having the 27 rows uh, sorry 50 rows right 50 rows are matching okay 50 rows are matching if you remember right so the employee table and department table 50 rows all the employees are having the corresponding department details that's why all the 50 rows as a matching records after that if you remember we have chosen the department id 50 and department number i think 30 which is a purchasing and shipping right so what you can do here you can say dept underscore purchasing executed so here it will tell you so purchasing is the department name department id is 30 the total number of employees is 6 total salary that they are paying is 24900 similar to this you also have something called shipping department underscore shipping if you execute this under shipping you can see the department id is 50 the total employee count is 23 the total salaries that they are paying for this particular shipping department is 85600 okay so this is how you can able to do the testing so one more thing i let me tell you if you go to workflows so delta live tables if you click on this pl underscore training so here it is completed right it is just completed so you also have some other way that you can able to open this particular thing is just click on settings okay so you see right side if you go to settings right side you see something called json meaning in the json you can able to see the script right this script also you can able to edit it instead of editing through the ui if you feel you want to edit through the code you can even edit through the code as well correct the paths if you want to pass it dynamically anything you want to make it as a dynamic you can able to go and make it as a dynamic okay so yeah that's all team so please let me know if you have any questions sir unity catalog when is the sessions i will update you in the group okay Oh. Any questions specific to DLT? Okay, if no questions, then thank you. That's all good.